Good morning, my soccer universe. Feels like spring already. Very sunny, warmer. I don't have a big jacket. Feeling good, I would say. Yeah, uh, yesterday's games, I think the overall feeling is good, uh, mainly because teams that I care for are winning. Uh, most, mostly Lusk, who actually had a huge win at Sturm Graz which is a, you know, a game in Graz, I have to say, is always a crapshoot for me because uh, they rarely win there. They rarely, uh, it's one of those games and yesterday 3-0, uh, it really, really looks good. And now uh, it's 11 points behind, but after the points I have, only five points behind Salzburg. Um, I'm quite happy about that, and I'm today, you can already see, I'm all in Lusk gear. Um, another black and white team that won, had a big win, uh, is Park, uh, won at Panathinaikos 2-0. Also, I mean, Park looks like the new Greek champion, uh, which would be amazing to have that. And yeah, another black and white team, but the one that this time around I don't support so much, again, I really do not dislike Juventus that much. I dislike them for the simple reason that they are just winning, 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 winning and no one is coming even close. Uh, that's what bugs me and they're not even playing that great. Uh, to be honest, in the Champions League I even wouldn't mind if Juventus would win. And in fact, I would probably even support it. Uh, although this year I'm not quite sure how I would think about Ronaldo winning a fourth one in a row. But then they have to now get out of the Atletico Madrid hole, which doesn't look all that well either. So it's definitely, uh, I'm kind of conflicted on Juventus, but uh, one thing's for sure, I definitely should have a Juventus shirt, which I don't uh, at the moment. And yeah, uh, I will come, but you know, my latest order also didn't ex include a Juve shirt. So there you go. Um, it needs to be the right one. Well, Juventus won yesterday, but boy, was that a not so straight forward affair uh, at Napoli. I mean, this was the big clash, the two best teams and probably the two best coaches in Italy going at each other. Um, and I gotta say, uh, Napoli, I mean, I didn't see, I didn't see, I heard the first 20 minutes because I, I volunteered to put the kids to bed in the hope that they are asleep by 8.30. No, they were not, but you know, it took 20 minutes. And in those 20 minutes, I had always, from what I hear and when I watch the highlights, Napoli worst was a slightly better team, slightly, slightly. Um, especially with Zielinski uh, really having control of the game. But then horrible back pass. Uh, it was kind of through a press for Ofman Zukic, who I don't, I, What's the name of the Napoli defender? Doesn't count. Anyway, uh, comes from, from, from the goalie to the defender, Manzukic presses, uh, forces a back pass, which is horribly weighted uh, right into the path of Ronaldo, who has a clear run on goal. Uh, goalkeeper comes out, takes down Ronaldo, red card. Spina comes in, which I thought is the first goalkeeper for Napoli. I was well, a little bit surprised, but I didn't see Napoli of late not that much. Uh, free kick, Pjanic puts it into the net, uh, which was an avoidable free kick. Uh, if Zielinski, for all his greatness, if he would jump, that ball is not going in. And also, Ospina was more or less right there. I mean, this was savable. I think if uh, the goalkeeper is warm, there's no chance that he's gonna uh, let it go in. Uh, then, right off the bat, Zielinski hits the post. Uh, Kickoff, Zielinski hits the post. Napoli really giving Juventus trouble and not little trouble. Uh, but Juventus is just clinically, absolutely clinically. Uh, cor corner kick, uh, ball comes in, um, Emre Can, 2-0 for Juventus. At that point, I mean, I finished the uh, half at that point, I said, okay, I know where this is going, it's just a question whether Ronaldo scores. So, um, 
I did a few other things. Uh, went to bed and said, okay, let's check quickly. And I see, ah, red card for Juventus. Pull it on. And then Kaya Kahn scores. And I'm back in. Back in the game. Uh, Napoli had 75% of the ball in the second half. Did everything to get Juventus uh, get in, you know, press Juventus to get a goal against uh, one more goal. Um, but in fact, there were not that many great chances. It was just enormous pressure. And uh, but Juve defended kind of uh, well, except. The one point where uh, I think it was Douglas Costa ball ball goes, in my opinion, on his chest, on the arm, and it's a penalty. Pretty much the same penalty that uh, was given against Inter, and ahead of the ahead of the Inter game, I would say this is not the penalty. When I saw yesterday the review, I said, okay, if this penalty was given against Inter, it will be given against Juventus too, and so it was, and. Insigne steps up, uh, Szczesny is in the corner, but Insigne slams it at the post. Second post for Napoli. Some inches in the other direction and Napoli wins this game. Probably a, a draw would, would have been deserved. Juve clung onto a victory and now uh, it's pretty clear Juve is in absolute control of the league will most likely win Serie A and Napoli is only 8 points ahead of Milan at the moment and I'm seriously wondering but this is only a slight wondering is there a second place in there for Milan? maybe 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 not Milan didn't play that great so I would uh, go more the direction maybe not but boy would that be a surprise for me but yeah I'm happy with third place at the moment uh, cannot ask for more so that's a uh, bit more Serie A action. I know Atalanta beat Fiorentina 3-1. Didn't see that game because I watched the Merseyside derby and then I was hoping to see some highlights of the last game, which I actually got to. And, uh, but I watched one game, uh, pretty much most of it. Udine against uh, Bologna. I, you know, it was kind of mid, uh, mid-afternoon. I was not really into watching that much but then you know I asked my daughters do you want to play no you don't want to play my wife wanted to watch a movie so I said okay let's uh, put on a match um, and I had the choice shall I watch Chelsea full uh, Fulham Chelsea didn't feel like it honestly uh, I thought I'm gonna watch anyway the Mercy side diary that would be a little bit too much English overkill and um, despite me liking both teams <laughs> I saw where this match was going. Although um, it was probably more hard work for Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea won 2-1. They had many chances after they made the 2-1. I mean, Igoin could have made two goals. He made one. Um, Jorginho scored. Uh, it was an equalizer by Fulham, but there was not much coming. And then in the last half hour, uh, Fulham kind of was pressing on. So that's that game. But then I looked around and I got stuck at Udine Bologna. I thought this is the most interesting one. I mean, it's a relegation battle, but you know, I do like Udine, black and white. Uh, and I wanted to see how Bologna is doing. It actually was a very even game. I thought that Bologna, uh, the jersey was, uh, this is how France should play all the time. Dark, uh, blue, white and red. It was a little bit uh, odd for me for Bologna, but uh, I actually liked it. Uh, yeah. Udine, of course, in the black and white stripes. Yeah, they took a lead through a penalty. Uh, Bologna equalized through Palacio, which to me is also a little bit. Uh, five years ago, this guy played in the World Cup final and now he's uh, battling rele relegation. But I actually have hoped that Bologna will make it. I mean, I, both teams I want are uh, not being involved in relegation, but um, you know, if I had to choose, yes, I want Udine to, to stay up as Pesky's opponent there for Milan. I actually do like Udine uh, quite some, and I know. I said I want to have a Juve shirt, I want to have a Udo Udo shirt, probably even more. Anyway, I'm talking already a lot. 
Uh, Udine was impressing in the second half, but never had kind of this breakthrough. Uh, I thought in the first half, um, Bologna could have made it 2-1 easily. They were uh, the better team. And I gotta say, when the Udine goalkeeper um, <laughs> gave me some shivers in the first half, especially, I mean, there was one chance, there was a free kick that I thought is easily saveable, but he uh, let, let it go and then Bologna hits the post and the ball is coming almost at the exact same angle back. I mean, it was a hilarious scene in a way. Um, yeah. And then Udine gets, uh, was, I think it, well, it was a freak. Oh, no, it was, it was a cross in that was kind of poorly defended. Uh, the goalkeeper for Bologna, I think, I think if he, he comes out, there's maybe a chance that he gets it. But I, I thought more it was poorly defended by uh, Bologna. Header in the 79th minute and Udine hangs on to the win 2-1. Uh, other games from Italy that I remember, I'm gonna do it this evening, a video, uh, look through all the leagues. Uh, I think um, Sampdoria won 2-0, uh, not 2-1 at Spal. Uh, that was another Cagliarella scoring two goals within the first 11 minutes. Yeah. So that was that uh, in Italy. Uh, then there was, of course, in Spain, the most interesting result is the 2-0 win by Atletico Madrid at San Sebastián. Um, Real Sociedad. Morata scoring two goals uh, in the first half and yeah, sealing that now five points out of Real Madrid, seven behind Barcelona. Seems like a safe second spot for Atletico Madrid. And then, of course, the Merseyside Derby. Uh, I want to talk more about it, but there's not much to talk in the first half. Everton really, really was stingy uh, and was very gave Liverpool a hard time. They never could find the possession they need. Still, and there were not that many great chances. I think that Everton. Um, took the control from Liverpool in the sense that they never let Liverpool rest and develop their game. However, Liverpool still had had, had a big chance, and, uh, especially Mohamed Salah. I mean, he had one clear run on goal, and if he's in better form, he's making that goal. But you can see that there is something not quite right with Salah. Honestly, I would have taken off Salah. Uh, in the second half. Yes, he was active, he got the passes, but whenever he tried to get involved in the game, he botched it. I mean, uh, he either botched a chance, he let Arvons get a tackle away, or uh, if he plays a pass, it's going to the opposition. Uh, a really hor a horrible showing. I didn't un un understand what Klopp's thinking was of not bringing on Shakiri. I mean, he brought on Firmino for Origi. I wonder if Origi, bring on Origi from the beginning was kind of, uh, yeah, this is the guy who scored against you this uh, wonderful goal uh, in the 97th minute the last time, the time around to kind of remind Everton of that. Not sure if that worked. I mean, I liked him better than uh, Salah, but yeah. Also, uh, Mane. Mane was the best one, but he was had he was forced to work a little bit too much from the back. So yeah, it didn't look good. In the second half, there was a spell right around 65th to 75th minute where Liverpool really threatened to score. I really thought that they had big chances, but uh, too imprecise, lacking precision all over the pitch, and they couldn't get the breakthrough. And then it was in the end actually Everton. Although Liverpool now had more possession, Everton could keep couldn't keep up their pressing. Uh, at that moment, Liverpool had more of the ball, but uh, going forward didn't look all that good. And Everton actually looked a little bit more dangerous towards the end, and it ended how it, how we all thought it will end in a nil-nil draw at that point. I mean, I'm not at the beginning of the game, but you know, uh, I think starting at the 75th or so, I, I thought, oh, either lucky punch for either, thing, but it looks like a nil-nil draw. It was a nil-nil draw. Atmosphere was great. Um, Everton now got, I don't want to say it's a revenge, but you know, slight revenge by knocking off Liverpool from the top of the table. Now it's Manchester City, a point of Liverpool, ahead of Liverpool, and seeming, and as in Germany, I don't see it 
I think Liverpool botched that one now. Uh, seven point lead, Dortmund had even nine point lead. And now, ah, doesn't look good. I think Germany and England is going how everyone thought it would go from the beginning. Uh, that Bayern and Manchester City are gonna win that one. And what bothers me the most is that I got my two Liverpool shirts and since then Liverpool is losing. Should I buy a City shirt? Should I? Maybe I should. Uh, I mean, I actually like their away jersey this year. So let's see. Let's just wait and see. Uh, I would, you know, for me, City is kind of. Uh, if they didn't have the whole Emery thing hanging behind them, I actually would be more, way more willing to support City than I do at the moment. Uh, I mean, they have. Their squad is amazing. Uh, Guardiola is a great coach. Uh, from that point, the point by my view, there's uh, stuff to like about City. I just don't like the uh, workings behind and what made this great team similar to PSG. Although I think City probably has, uh, I want to say, probably the better setup in a way. But yeah, it's a little bit conflicting. But I gotta say, that city shirt is a beauty. That's an absolute beauty, that uh, away shirt. And yeah, maybe, maybe. See, one video, I ordered just two shirts for more, more, more money than I was willing to spend, but you know, two shirts for the shirt price of one, still okay. Uh, and I'm already talking about the next few. I, I'm a collector and it's, it's never gonna stop. So yeah, uh, as I said, I'm gonna do a roundup of all the leagues probably this evening. Uh, I know that there are Monday games, I won't include those. Uh, but yeah, I don't have it right now, but this is what from memory I remembered from this weekend. And yeah, quite some interesting games uh, were played. I think the best game of the weekend, uh, despite it being Seemingly over at halftime was uh, not this weekend, but yesterday was uh, Napoli Juventus. Well, maybe a case can can be made that this was the best game of the weekend. It was a great game, that's for sure. Let me look at the other. I mean, the El Clasico was good, but it was not uh, amazing. Uh, the North London derby also left me a little bit cold. Uh, Roma Lazio was blown down. I would say, I actually, say Napoli Juve is the best. Was the best so. There you go. That was of the big games, and there were a whole lot of big games this weekend. But that was the biggest, but that was the best. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna look forward to how Napoli is going to do the Europa League against Salzburg. Uh, as I said, for Austria, it's better to support Salzburg, but my heart is definitely more for Napoli. That I gotta say. Well, that's it from me for now. Um, let me know which games you watched this weekend. If there's anything you might want to add, drop a comment, comment below. Uh, I said, happy for the black and white teams that, that, that I watched. Uh, maybe not so much about Juventus, but you know, the league was anyway theirs. Uh, they made a great game and they showed how clinical they are, but they didn't deserve the win, that I have to say. Other black and white teams, the th other three, uh, Lask, Pauk, Udine, happy for you. Um, and I'm devastated about Liverpool, but um, last few weeks we knew how it how it how it was going. Give me a thumbs up if you liked that video. I'm sure, if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe and with that i want to wish you a wonderful day